Hi, thank you. I haven't said anything yet. So. Uh, okay, a, a couple examples first. In October 2010, five students at Carleton University in Ottawa were arrested by the Ottawa police on charges of trespassing. Their crime? Peacefully displaying anti-abortion posters on the university grounds without permission. It asked permission and it had been denied. The posters, showing photographs of abor aborted fetuses, were deemed offensive by the university administration and the students who were non-confrontational throughout were ordered handcuffed and hauled away in a police van. Now it's inconceivable that if these had been Arab students protesting an Israeli action, or queer students demonstrating for, let's say, transgender rights, it's inconceivable that they would have been treated in such a manner. Last year at the University of Toronto, for an example, radical feminist students were allowed, with the police standing by, to verbally assault and physically harass young men attempting to attend a men's issues talk. And though they were caught on video for all to see, they have not been punished or even rebuked in any manner by the university administration. Such a double standard is business as usual at taxpayer funded institutions of higher learning all across Canada. If you want to start a sport hunting club, open a men's center, defend Israel's right to exist, analyze the sanction for the killing of infidels in the Quran, or any number of other wrong activities on a Canadian university campus, good luck. Canadian universities are not in the business of debating ideas. More and more, they're in the business of declaring and enforcing what is and is not acceptable to say and think. This is often uh, referred to as the long march through the institutions, that's a cultural Marxist phrase, describing the gradual, deliberate takeover of the academy and other elite institutions. Alan Bloom, in, in his book, The Closing of the American Mind, it's a wonderful book, uh, Alan Bloom describes this takeover as becoming possible because scholars and administrators lost faith that there was anything um, if there was any intrinsic value in studying literature or history or philosophy and came to believe that the pursuit of social justice, as they defined it, was a far more worthy goal than the pursuit of truth. And the way was paved for the transformation of the university from an institution that was at least ostensibly committed to knowledge to one overtly dedicated to social engineering and correct belief. And you can find evidence for this um, commitment to any university website and the kinds of things they say to promote themselves. And the result is a totalitarianism, not of the jackboot, but of the rainbow flag, the sweet grass ceremony, and the women only safe space. Now the reign of political correctness on university campuses has had many consequences. I can't talk about any of them in any detail. Uh, very uh, stringent racial and sexu sexual harassment legislation, affirmative action hiring, all sorts of things. Uh, most egregiously perhaps, it has seen once legitimate academic subjects completely undermined by progressivist ideology. It has also seen the creation of entirely new subjects of study, including women's studies, black studies, queer studies, peace studies, disability studies, and so on, even fat studies, apparently. Uh, these are declaredly activist programs with little content other than ideology. And they are very dangerous, in my opinion. They miseducate students to feel revulsion for their country and to identify themselves as righteous victims allied with the enemies of Western culture and dedicated to its overthrow. When we survey the dominance of politically correct ideology amongst university professors for whom, whom evil is synonymous with George Bush, I have an old colleague at the University of Saskatchewan, he still has a big placard up on his door in the English department that says, impeach Bush now. 
um, I mean, that's just so so pathetic in so many different ways. Uh, for whom evil is synonymous with George Bush, and for whom an Islamic terrorist is always a misunderstood freedom fighter. One can only conclude when we when we look at, at these ideas that that the long march has been a devastating success. Even if a counter march could be launched, and, and this is very doubtful, in that conservative and free thinking intellectuals just don't tend to conduct ruthless campaigns for intellectual dominance. We're looking at a decades long struggle to return integrity to our universities with certainly no sure victory. Is it time to give some serious thought to alternatives such as private universities? Is it possible to counter university indoctrination with carefully targeted programs, workshops, publications, think tanks? That's what we're here to discuss. Whatever our long-term plans, no parent or citizen should underestimate the poisonous culture of ignorance, anarchic resentment, and anti-Western hatred that is being incubated in Canadian universities today. Sorry for being a doubt. <laughs>